Hello and welcome to Victor George Leather Goods YouTube videos. So today I'm going to show you how you can make an 1875 man's wallet. So if you are a living historian, a Civil War or a Western lifestyle reenactor, a movie extra, or just love the Western lifestyle, then this video is for you. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this and then we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you how to make it. Thanks. Okay, a while back I had the pleasure of being at the Charlotte Hall Museum in Prescott, Arizona. And while there I spied upon a wallet similar to this behind enclosed glass, handmade in 1875 by Albert L. Sieber, Chief of Scouts. So obviously I was intrigued. I copied the pattern as close as I could from the wallet uh, that was in glass. And this is the version that I came up with. So it's a strap bound wallet, which is accurate to the era of 1840 to the turn of the century for man's wallets. Had a couple of pockets that they probably carried their land deeds or some currency. Didn't have a lot of things to carry back in those days, but they did have wallets. So the nice thing about this particular build is we're not gonna make glass edges. We're not, um, it's, it's not gonna be a very, very clean piece of wallet. We want to keep error correctness and we want it to weather and patina as quickly as possible. So we're going to take the opportunity here and show you how you can make your own and uh, let's get started. Thanks. Okay so let's talk about the components that you're going to need to make this wallet yourself. So we're going to start with the back piece and uh, this is all made out of five six ounce um, oil tan leather. So the main back piece cut out in rectangular form for now is 13 and a half by five and a quarter inches. So that will be your main piece. You'll need to cut one pocket piece, which is five and a quarter inches by three and three eighths inches. You'll also need two slot tabs and they will be three quarters of an inch by two and a half inches. So you'll need two of those. Um, We'll trim those later, I'll show you how I do that. And then you'll need a binding strap, three quarters of an inch by 14 inches. We're gonna trim that also at the end of the project. So the nice thing about this, it's all rectangular cuts. I'm gonna use a two inch washer to cut my, uh, my corners. You're gonna need a oblong uh, punch, three quarter inch, sewing thread needles if you don't have a sewing machine. And um, it should be very simple and uh, something that a beginner or intermediate leather worker can easily make. Let's get started. Okay, once you have your uh, pieces cut out with the measurements that I provided, I will say that uh, one of these uh, ret retractable knives, wheel knives, uh, make cutting this type of leather very easy. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna take my back piece and I'm gonna turn it to the flesh side and I'm gonna make myself three line measurements for my reference. So I like to keep this rectangular as long as I can. So I'm going to visualize that this is going to be my top and this is going to be the bottom. This is where eventually I'm going to round these corners. So from the bottom piece, I will go to four, or I'm sorry, five and a quarter inches. And I will, I'm going to use a pencil. Normally I use a, an awl just to give myself some lines. And that right there is where the bottom of the pocket is going to fold up, be tacked and stitched. Okay, my second reference line will be the bottom of the money pocket, and I'm going to go six and three quarters of an inch. So my second mark will be six and three quarters of an inch, and my last um, reference line is ten and an eighth inches. So again, from the bottom, I will go up to 10 and an eighth inches. And this only makes it easier for me and hopefully for you as well. So the bottom is the fold up. The second and third reference line will be your money pocket. Okay, so that just tells me where eventually I need to uh, glue and sew. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go from the reference, the first reference line, and we're gonna give ourselves a glue area. 
So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna indicate with these wing dividers where my glue line is gonna be. And obviously we only need the two end pieces glued. So that just gives me a reference. And I'm gonna take my glue. And I'm just gonna glue in preparation of folding this up for my stitch line. Okay, take your time, be neat. Uh, and you can use any glue that you like, contact cement. This happens to be a water-based um, contact cement as well. Okay, like any glue, we have to let that tack up a little bit. We're gonna give that uh, 10 minutes to tack up and then we'll come back. Okay, now that the glue has had time to tack up, we're just gonna fold this to that first line and we're going to press it all together. Okay, that's your bottom pocket. Now, of course, you can make this bottom pocket a little bit larger if you like. This is um, solely my, um, interpretation of, of the measurements. So we're gonna tack that down. We're gonna take a smooth faced convex hammer and we're going to tap the edges. Flatten that bottom piece a little bit. Okay, now once we get that tacked up, um, the best scenario is to go ahead and clip this up and just let it sit for a little while, but I can show you the next step. So once you get that tacked up, then you go in a full eighth of an inch and you give yourself a sewing line. And again, that's up to your interpretation as to how wide you want your sewing line. It doesn't really matter to me. I like that full eighth there. Okay, so now once we have that, then obviously we'll want to take a stitch and iron. This is a very inexpensive one. Um, and what I usually do is I'll take one of the tines and I'll go above the edge of the leather and I'll set it there and I will hammer my stitch lines in. Now, of course, if you have a sewing machine, that makes it a lot easier, but I actually enjoy and prefer a hand stitch. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, probably good enough for that height. And I'm gonna take one tie and put it over the edge of the leather. And, whoop. We're gonna give ourselves our stitch indicators. Okay, so. When uh, that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my thread to saddle stitch both of these seams. And uh, through the magic of television, I'll be back with those sewn up. All right. Okay, so now I've finished sewing and I finish all my stitching on the inside. I use 22 inches of thread for each seam and I double tacked it on top and on the bottom. So I'm just gonna burn my threads here, again, on the inside of the project. And then once I do that, I'm just gonna tap my stitches flat. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to establish the location for the tab slots. So they need to be centered. So before we can put the money pocket on here, as you can see, we have to put that tab in there. So now on my patterns, I have the slot locations already marked. So real quickly, what I'm gonna do to show you how I do that, if you're only gonna make one. So I'm gonna find the absolute center of this with a centering ruler.
And as you can see here, you put a little mark right there on center. Now, for my top slot, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna center this graph ruler on that center line dot. And I'm gonna go to one and three quarters of an inch. So one and three quarters of an inch. And I'm on that center dot and I'm gonna go, whoop, again, vertical and horizontal lines match up. And I'm gonna go on the edge of the ruler and I'm gonna put a three quarter inch slot indicator. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And now my second measurement down, cause I want the slots on the same path of this, but I want it in the center of the back of the money pocket. So I'm gonna take this down to one and a half, I'm sorry, five and a half inches. And that's gonna give me approximately, it should be really, really close mathematically, but uh, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do my three quarter inch slots. And I'm in the same path. And I'm gonna go three and a quarter inches here as well. Okay, so now that's gonna be my slots. I'll go ahead and punch them out real quick. And we'll just center the bag punch on each line. And you know, you need to make sure that you're perfectly straight up and down. Okay, there's my bag slots. All right, now we're going to put our slot tabs in there. And uh, this one here we can do a little bit later. We obviously need to do this one before we can sew on our panel. So let's do some preparatory lines here prior to gluing. I'm just gonna take this ruler. And again, I'm doing this in, in pen so that you can see it. I'm just gonna go all the way across. That's my glue line. And this will come in handy in a minute, and I'll show you. And that's my glue line for the money pocket. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take one of our tabs and place it in here like that, and then center it. Now you have a lot of excess that you don't need, and I'll trim that off in just a second once it's sewn down and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so now that we have the tab centered, we don't have to do anything, it can be flat in there. And uh, you can go a full eighth of an inch away. I usually just eyeball this. And you give yourself your stitch indicator on that side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew that. And then once that's sewn, I'm gonna uh, repeat that same thing on this one. So when I come back, both of these uh, will be stitched together. Okay, so now I have sewn on the slot tab, trimmed it, burned it, and um, just need to tap it down, turn it over. And on this side, I've already skived off the excess here. I'll do that here to show you how I did it. Now, for these simple little six um, hole tabs, I used a six prong, four millimeter. I used 15 inches of 0 0.08 thread. It gave me plenty there. So now you have that. And embarrassingly enough, I cannot find my skiver. So I'm gonna take this ruler here and I'm gonna push it up against that. And don't laugh at me, but I'm gonna, I found this window scraper and I'm just gonna take it a little bit beyond that. There it goes. Whew. Anyway, this is not recommended, kids. All right, so that's good enough. You can put a little bit of glue behind there, but I, I don't usually worry about that. Okay, so now we're ready to put the money pocket on there. And I've went ahead and scribed my, 
my glue area here, and I'm gonna need to do that on this as well. So I'll take this, and as you can see here, it only needs to be sewn around this way. I'll take my wing dividers, give myself a visual line for glue. Both sides here. And then on the bottom portion here. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, so what I'll do here is just to give myself a visual, I'll give myself an eighth of an inch line to show where I need to put my glue. And again, I'm just doing this here for a visual aid. Okay, so take a little squeeze bottle, take a brush, do whatever you want. This is kind of out there. You don't want glue, you know, beyond that border. So just take your little squeeze bottle here and uh, give yourself a glue area here. Okay. And just enough to hold your leather in place for sewing. Of course, we're going to let that tack up. And then you can use a brush here. You can use whatever you want. This just seems to make life a little bit easier on these small little glue areas here. Okay, we're gonna let that tack up. And then we're going to place the money pocket in the appropriate spot. And we're gonna sew it, and then we'll be back. Okay, somehow I lost a little bit of the footage, but I'm gonna replicate that here for you. I went ahead and rounded my corners um, using a two inch washer, and then you just Trim them in straight lines around the washer. Um, you can also, instead of the rounded corners, you can just clip the corners uh, at an angle, however you like. It, or you can leave them square, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now I'm ready to put my slot tab in and my binding strap. I cut another three quarter inch slot punch one quarter inch away and centered on these straps. So the way these are gonna go is just like this. The binding strap, it's 14 inches, it, um, it's excess. I'll show you here afterwards how I trim that. And of course, that will go through the front here and be sewn like that. Okay, so just add your stitch holes, stitch it, skive it, and um, then I'll show you how I trim the binding strap and how I add one additional thing to make this 1875 wallet compatible for 2023. All right, stick around, thanks. Okay, so now we have finished sewing the slot tab and the binder strap on. It's been skived, hammered down, and now we're ready to trim the uh, strap. So I'll fold the wallet pretty close up until the top of the pocket. Close it up. Take the binder strap, the excess binder strap, run it through. Run it through the front. So now I'd like to keep the tip of the strap right around here. And the reason for that is, um, you know, once you fill this up a little bit, 
you'll need a little bit of extra tab. So just take your, you can round that off. You can do anything you want. I'll show you a couple other examples here in a minute. But anyway, there you go. Cut that to whatever pleasing trim you like. And there is your 1875 wallet. So now if you're out on a reenactment or anything of that sort and you pull out your trifold from Walmart, shame on you. This will complete your kit. Okay, now as I promised, these are 1875 era correct style based on the museum piece. If you want to modernize it, which I did here on my personal carry wallet, is you just take the very bottom of the strap, instead of leaving it open, you'll just sew right up the middle and then you have room for credit cards, identification, and however else, whatever else you wanna carry. That'll modernize it uh, once it's all closed up. This thing's been in use for many months I don't mind taking the extra time to do these straps. And there's your man's wallet, circa 1875. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we are finished with this uh, unique 1875 man's wallet. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna continue to try to do different uh, videos. Um, try to stay outside of the norm a little bit. So. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. And with that, I bid you a good day. Thank you.